The afternoon sun bled through the dusty blinds, casting long, accusing shadows across the worn living room carpet. Beside me, Dennis, my lanky best friend with a permanent dusting of freckles across his nose, was equally absorbed in the pixelated battle on the screen. We were kings of our own digital domain, conquering pixelated landscapes and slaying virtual dragons. It was the perfect escape, a shield against the awkwardness of 8th grade and the looming anxiety of impending high school. Then, a sharp rap on the front door shattered the idyllic moment. We both flinched, controllers hovering mid-air, the silence that followed the knock heavy and unexpected. Probably a Jehovah's Witness, I mumbled, trying to sound nonchalant, but a prickle of unease ran down my spine, despite the warmth of the afternoon sun. Houses in our neighborhood, nestled comfortably in the quiet cul-de-sac, rarely saw uninvited visitors. Dennis, never the bravest, slowly crept towards the door, his every step magnified in the silence. He cracked it open just a sliver, peering through the gap with a cautious frown. Hello? He called out, his voice barely a whisper. The only reply was the chirping of crickets and the distant rumble of a lawnmower. Dennis pushed the door open wider, revealing an empty expanse bathed in the golden glow of the setting sun. A wave of relief washed over me, momentarily pushing back the unexplainable feeling of unease. Told you, I said, trying to sound confident. But the feeling wouldn't leave. It settled like a cold stone in the pit of my stomach. There was something, off, the silence, usually comforting in its suburban normalcy, now felt heavy, pregnant with an unseen tension. We returned to our game, but the joy was gone. Every creak of the house, every rustle of leaves against the window, sent shivers down my spine. The silence between controller clicks felt stretched, heavy with anticipation. Then, as if mirroring my growing fear, the rapping came again. This time, however, it wasn't on the front door, it echoed from the back, a rhythmic tapping against the glass of the kitchen window. We both froze, hearts pounding a frantic tattoo against our ribs, a primal fear, a sense of being watched, gripped me, slowly, legs leaden and heavy, we moved towards the kitchen. We exchanged a terrified glance, a silent question hanging heavy in the air, who could it be? The back of my neck prickled with goosebumps as we crept towards the kitchen, Dennis, pale and wide-eyed clung to my arm, his usual goofy grin replaced by a grimace of terror. Reaching the kitchen door, I gripped the cold metal knob, my hand slick with a film of sweat. Slowly, with a creak that seemed to echo through the entire house, I pushed the door open. The sight that greeted us was unremarkable, the backyard bathed in the fading light of day, the picnic table and swing set casting long, skeletal shadows across the grass, relief washed over me, momentarily pushing back the fear. But just as I started to relax, a low, guttural sound ripped through the air. It seemed to rise from the depths of the earth itself, a moan unlike anything I'd ever heard. It was a sound that scraped against bone, sending chills down my spine and making the hair on my arms stand on end. The moan was followed by a distinct thud, a heavy impact that seemed to vibrate through the very floorboards beneath our feet. It came from, below, the basement. A cold dread filled my stomach, turning my blood to ice, the basement. The dark, damp, perpetually neglected part of the house, a place where forgotten toys went to die and dusty boxes held secrets best left undisturbed. We stared at each other, fear flickering in our wide eyes. Something, or someone, was down there, making its presence known with those unearthly sounds. We knew what we had to do, but a primal fear, a paralyzing terror kept us rooted to the spot, staring at the basement door like a pair of rabbits caught in headlights. The basement door loomed before us, a dark portal to the unknown. Dennis, his face pale as a ghost, clung to my arm, his freckles stark against his pallor. With a deep breath that did little to calm my hammering heart, I reached for the doorknob. It was cold and slick with moisture, turning with a rusty groan that seemed to echo through the entire house. The heavy wooden door creaked open, revealing a gaping maw of darkness. A stale, fetid odor wafted up from the abyss, carrying with it the scent of mildew, damp earth, and something else, something old and decaying, the air in the basement seemed to hang heavy and still, thick enough to choke on. Dennis whimpered, his grip tightening on my arm, maybe we should just call the police, he whispered, his voice barely audible. But the chilling curiosity within me wouldn't be silenced, shaking off his grasp, I grabbed a dusty flashlight from a drawer by the door, its metal casing cold against my clammy palm, with a flick of the switch, the beam sputtered to life casting a weak yellow cone of light into the inky blackness. We inched closer, the creaking floorboards groaning under our weight, 
With each step, the temperature seemed to drop, sending shivers down my spine. Cobwebs brushed against my face, leaving a filmy residue on my skin. The basement was a labyrinth of pipes and exposed beams, shrouded in an oppressive darkness that swallowed the meter light from the flashlight. The air hung heavy with dust motes dancing in the beam, revealing an unsettling scene of neglect and decay. The source of the moans seemed to be coming from a boarded-up section of the far wall. As we approached, the smell intensified, a sickeningly sweet aroma of decay. The flashlight beam illuminated a loose plank, partially warped and hanging precariously from the wall. A cold dread filled my stomach, turning to ice as I realized what lurked beyond the boarded-up section. With a trembling hand, I reached out and pushed against the loose plank. It gave way with a sickening crack, revealing a gaping hole. The flashlight beam pierced the darkness, illuminating a small ventilation grill lying discarded on the dusty floor. My heart hammered against my ribs as I aimed the light at the opening. What I saw next will forever be etched into my memory. A face, pale as bone, stared back at us through the opening. It was gaunt and skeletal, with sunken cheeks and hollow eyes that seemed to glow with an unnatural light. But it was the smile, a grotesquely wide grin that stretched across its face, revealing rows of jagged teeth that sent a wave of terror crashing over me. The face contorted, the smile widening further, as it lunged forward. A guttural roar, filled with a primal rage, erupted from the darkness, sending me stumbling back. Terror stripped away all reason. I screamed, a primal cry tearing from my throat. The basement echoed with the sound, amplifying the horror that unfolded before us. Dennis screamed too, a high-pitched shriek that sent a fresh jolt of terror through me. We stumbled back, tripping over our own feet in our haste to escape. The face, a horrifying caricature of a human grin, disappeared back into the opening. Adrenaline surged through my system, snapping me out of my terror-induced stupor. The basement door, we had to get to the basement door. The door, Mark, the door, Dennis shrieked, his voice laced with panic. I didn't need telling twice. We scrambled towards the entrance, the flashlight beam bouncing erratically as I ran. Every creak of the floorboard sounded like a monstrous footstep behind us. Every shadow stretched and morphed into a grotesque figure in the dim light. Reaching the door, I threw myself against it, slamming it shut with a resounding thud. But the relief was short-lived. A heavy thud against the door from the other side followed. The wood groaned in protest, the doorknob rattling violently. Panic clawed at my throat. We were trapped. Dennis, his face pale and streaked with tears, grabbed a nearby folding chair and slammed it against the door with a desperate cry. I followed suit, grabbing a rusty metal toolbox from a shelf and adding my own frantic blows to the cacophony. But the pounding from the other side only intensified. Each blow seemed to splinter the wood a little further, each groan a death knell for our flimsy barricade. A deafening laughter echoed from the other side, a sound devoid of humor, dripping with pure malice. You can't escape me. It boomed, its voice distorted by the wood. My breath hitched, the sound was unlike anything I'd ever heard, a guttural growl that sent shivers down my spine. It was the sound of pure evil, toying with its prey. We huddled together in the corner, backs pressed against the cold, damp wall. Tears streamed down Dennis' face, his eyes wide with terror. I gripped the toolbox tighter, my knuckles white, the only weapon I had against the unseen horror on the other side of the door. The pounding continued, relentless and terrifying. Each blow chipped away at our remaining hope, replacing it with a suffocating dread. We were trapped in a living nightmare, with no escape in sight. We were like caged animals, cornered and helpless. Relief, fragile and fleeting, washed over me as the pounding ceased. The oppressive silence that followed felt almost like a physical weight lifting. Dennis, his face a mask of terror and exhaustion, slumped against the wall his ragged breaths echoing in the stillness. We strained to hear any sound, any movement from the other side, but the silence held, just as a sliver of hope, fragile as a spiderweb, began to form in my mind. A new sound cut through the oppressive quiet, a soft scratching noise. It came from the direction of the broken ventilation grill, the gateway to the horrifying entity we had glimpsed moments before. My heart lurched into my throat, the fragile hope shattering into a million pieces. Was the creature coming back? Was it trying to squeeze its grotesque form through the small opening? Terror threatened to paralyze me, but a primal instinct for survival, fueled by a morbid curiosity, took hold. I reached for the flashlight, its beam trembling in my hand like a frightened animal. Each step towards the grill felt like wading through mud, my legs heavy with dread. The scratching grew louder, sharper. With each agonizing step, 
my breath came in ragged gasps, a dry rasp against the thick, stale air. Finally, I reached the opening, the beam of the flashlight illuminating a dusty cavity beyond, the stench of decay intensified, a wave of nausea rolling through me. For a moment, I saw nothing but cobwebs and debris, my stomach lurched, a sickening feeling of dread gripping me. Had it left? Was this some sick game it was playing on us? Then, I saw it, nestled amongst the dust and grime, lay a single sheet of white paper. The scratching had stopped abruptly, my hand, slick with sweat, reached out and slowly pulled the paper from the opening, unfolding it carefully, I felt a coldness spread through me, a premonition of something terrible, written in a spidery scrawl, stark against the white background, were three chilling words, I'll be back. A choked sob escaped Dennis' lips, we remained huddled in the corner, the note clutched in my hand like a talisman against the unseen. Hours later, when the first rays of dawn peeked through the basement window, casting an eerie glow across the dusty floor, the police finally arrived. They swarmed our house, their flashing lights painting strobing patterns on the walls. But when they reached the basement, they found nothing, no trace of the entity, just the broken ventilation grill. My parents returned, faces etched with worry, only to be met with a confusing spectacle. The police, baffled by the events, offered little comfort. We were left with the gnawing fear that the unseen presence was still out there, watching, waiting. The basement, once a place of forgotten toys and childhood memories, became a tomb of terror, a constant reminder of our brush with something monstrous. The scrawled words on the note echoed in my mind, a chilling mantra, I'll be back. It wasn't a question, it was a promise, 